James cut off a large chunk of meat that was larger than the largest steak he'd ever seen before and tossed it onto the tarp. He listened to Maya and Kate chatting, occasionally giggling about something they were talking about. He knew that would be about something that didn't interest him much, so he left them alone. It's interesting to think about how I'm handling meat that's likely of a higher quality than anything I could have eaten in the real world. Not only that, I'll gain improved abilities after eating it, James thought to himself. Though it had been a long time since he had been the boy living on the street, the trauma that he had to experience would likely never leave him. It would be like a shadow that would follow him wherever he went. The memories would be a constant reminder of the family that abandoned him. Thinking back on such memories, he chuckled to himself. At least it's given me a perspective that not many people had. I imagine that being homeless was one of the contributing factors to why I was able to survive that day. Not only was I able to avoid the creatures relatively easily, but the fact that I knew how to survive on my own meant that civilization collapsing didn't have as big of an impact. For him, living on the streets was nearly equivalent to civilization having collapsed. There weren't any safety nets he could depend on, relying on his developed skills to survive. Tossing another large stake of meat onto the tarp, the sight of the growing pile just showed him how much his life had changed. While lost in thought, half listening to what Maya was talking about to Kate while focusing on his thoughts, he soon pulled out of them back to the world around him. This should be enough, James said to the others. He looked at the pile of organs that had been removed. Some of them, like the liver, would be eaten. The rest would be buried. It was possible that the organs that were tossed could be turned into a delicious meal, but they didn't have the experience. One of the books he and Maya had purchased offered recipes for many other organs they would throw away. Still, James didn't want to deal with experimentation. Already, it was pretty late, and he was feeling tired. We'll roast the remaining meat, James said to Maya and Kate. Smiling, Kate said, I'm sure we'll be hungry again when we wake up, so we can have some for breakfast. Nodding, I'm sure there'll be plenty of food, James agreed. That's why one of the dishes we're doing is a simple stew. It can keep cooking throughout the night, and the people on the watch can eat whenever they get hungry. If there was one thing that was different compared to the real world before things went crazy, it was how their bodies became more efficient at handling food. It also caused them to be often hungry, though it wasn't to the degree that they'd die if they weren't able to eat. I think we could go several weeks without food, though our bodies wouldn't be happy about it, James estimated in his mind. The food they ate may have energy contained inside, but the surrounding air around them also had the same energy. This meant that even when they didn't have access to food, their bodies were practically always eating food. It kind of feels like we are plants, like how they take in sunlight for energy. James laughed. Both Maya and Kate looked at him with confused expressions on their faces. <laughs>